Hello, Save Jerseyans. This is blogger in chief Matt Rooney for SaveJersey.com. We've stepped away from Zoom, thank God, for today because it's a special day. We're with our old friend, State Senator Tom Kane Jr. Great to see you. Again. Thank great you to see you. Me. Always a pleasure to be with you, especially when we're in one of New Jersey's great diners. Most wonderful diners, and in great areas. You see, it's, it's packed today. A lot I had of energy. A lot of people come out. I had a lot of trouble finding a parking spot. I had to do the three times circle before I was finally able to find a spot. So, if that's an indication of things to come, that's a good thing. And we also have a very, very special guest today. None other than leader Kevin McCarthy. He is the top Republican in the U.S. House of Representatives. You're, of course, familiar with him. Leader, welcome to New Jersey. Thanks for having me. Now, this diner is famous for its hash browns and its pork roll and all the other, or is it Taylor Ham? We're still in pork roll territory. No, Taylor Ham. Is it Taylor Ham in your district? Yes. All right, we'll fight about that later. Taylor Ham in my house. How's that? <laughs> Every state has its stuff, right? We feel more strongly about that issue in New Jersey than almost anything else. But it's all about definitions. It's all about definitions. But we've got some great food here. But obviously, that's not what brings you to New Jersey. Why are you with us? I'm here for this thing. You know, when I look at what's happening in the country, um, you look at what the Democrats have done in such a short amount of time. This excess spending has just created inflation. It's a tax for all Americans. You look at their policies of defunding the police with all these major cities, crime rising. We look at what's happening in the border. We need people who are tested, people who understand, who do the job. Tom is the one for the job. The closest race we had pretty much in the country last cycle. And when you sit back and you look at it today, the current incumbent, Ronowski, he lied to the voters. He was literally trading stock, betting against American companies, wanted them to lose to profit himself while lying to his own constituents about it. And that's while he was lecturing other politicians that they shouldn't be profiting off of the pandemic. Yes, he said that with great frequency on the campaign trail. Unfortunately, we're used to politicians sometimes being hypocrites, but this takes the cake, doesn't it? Are you hearing from today here at the diner constituents that are not only concerned about what's going on in the country, but also feeling a little indignant that their congressman was potentially getting rich off of Peloton and other Pelotons? So they would suffer. Well, that's, that's a question people have right now. When you look at what we've done in New Jersey, in pandemic days, we worked hard to come together, understand what's important for people, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, the same thing. And that is a very different from what happened in Washington, D.C. The folks on car shoes are working on and late the aid and so many made decisions so late. So I'm going to one for 18 years today. Yep, the second just been referred to a college, so she's just recently back. You know, when, when we were growing up, we all had these great opportunities. And I'm like, I want them to have the exact same opportunities that we ever had growing up and the policies that the Democratic Party just talked about of, of going down through the Congress. Right now, people are understanding that creating, we can make the state more unaffordable, we can have more transparency in government, and we can have to make the public counter. The decisions are against not only to vote 100% in Nancy Pelosi, this so far this cycle. He's followed here to on every single issue. Those aren't the jerky documents. So that I think the folks has hidden information from the voters that they should have disclosed again and again. And we need to get down to Washington DC and find bipartisan office talking people where you go down there, find the right answer from the first and far more affordable, make sure we can back the inflation, have the right common sense policies that they're making sure that the majority of generations of New Jerseyans can stay in or stay in New Jersey. Now, we here in New Jersey, unfortunately, haven't voted for a Republican for president since 88 when I was three years old. So we're not always used to this feeling of being so consequential in national elections. But, you know, let's let's talk about it because it's something that I'm excited about. You may very well be the next Speaker of the House. And we're only a few seats away from making that happen. And we have at least four here in New Jersey, including NJ7, right? which may flip in 2022. So is it fair to say, or is it just me puffing because I'm a proud New Jersey, that the road to the majority runs right through New Jersey? No, you're 100% correct. <laughs> Think about this. The last time California voted for a Republican president was 88 too. Our best state for Congress last election was California. We won four seats. We beat four Democrats last cycle. Democrats only have a five-seat majority. So when you talk about winning the majority, it does come in New Jersey. But what you really want is not for the sake of winning the majority. It's talking about making the next century the American century. Who's strong enough to stand up to China? Who's 
who's going to be held accountable? Who's actually going to bring people together instead of dividing? You currently have a member of Congress, Malinowski, that is so liberal, 100% with Pelosi, never working with the other side. He wants to use a title, but he never votes that way. He lies to his own voters. I can see the character of who he is. I'm not even sure at the end of the day, after these ethics come out, would he still be in the office? That's a question we have to hold now. But what he has done. But you want to find someone that can bring people together, but you also want to find somebody that can do the job. That will listen, he's not afraid to listen, but not afraid to leave at the same time. How long has that record? I've watched this guy from afar. I've watched him bridge the gap between both sides. I've watched him take the time. I've watched him leave time and again. And that's really what America is craving to have and watch him. So you would be the authority, because we heard from these Democrats in New Jersey, Andy Kim, Tom Malinowski, Mikey Sherrill, Josh Gottheimer, that they were going to reach across the aisle when they got to Washington, D.C. Never one. Never one. No Christmas cards, no efforts to reach out to you and say, hey, Kevin, can we work together on a bill? It's not just not reaching across. They go out of their way to pick. And look, I have friends on both sides of the aisle. The Democrats today are not the Democrats of old. The socialist wing of the party runs that party. And if you vote with them, you're voting for the most extreme future. And think about the outcome. The defunding of police, they voted for this. Now they want to defund the border. They've opened up the border. They're catching people on the terrorist watch list today coming across. This inflation, it was one party vote that gave you an extreme trillions of dollars that has only made inflation go up. And the tough part is you have those economic advisors in the Obama administration warning them against what they did. And now they're coming right back around and wanting to do more. It'd be funny if it wasn't so serious. That's how terrible it is. It's a real impact. You're looking for one third of the business bill during COVID. You've got to get through the long history of blocking the spending of people. Like I did. The problem with Democratic government White House is blocked billions of dollars in new taxes and new spending. On infrastructure, finding a plan to say how they would not only form also, it makes it more transparent, have more accountability. It also makes sure that the things like the gateway project get actually get built. So they you know find the right solutions, find the right partners, and then what and then you make you know America stronger because you've got a strong economy, you've got families that can afford to invest in their own businesses. You can focus on making sure that you've got the right kind of businesses coming up. And again, it's about finding the right partners, the car sale party, to make sure that we can make sure that New Jersey is far more affordable and more people can be new generations. And there were big promises from the Democrats now that they're technically in control of all of Congress, they have the White House, yet it seems like if something major doesn't change soon, Joe Biden's going to go down in history, is arguably the least successful first two years of any presidential administration in modern times. He's accomplished absolutely nothing. Why do you think the Democrats have been so unsuccessful leader in getting something accomplished? And if Republicans have a majority in the House, if you're there, and Senator Kane is Congressman Kane next year, what can Republicans do to break that logjam and actually accomplish something useful for the American people? Well, the very first thing is we'll sit down, we'll do our work in our committee. What we can do is focus on our constituents instead of our own pockets. Think about the congressman you have. For him to trade that many stocks, he's got to put time and effort into it. He's shorted. He's putting puts and calls on companies so he would reap a higher benefit instead of just investing and buying individual stocks. No, he wants to fast it. So he's spending his time there instead of spending his time worrying about the constituents. And when is he doing it? In the middle of the pandemic. Kids are out of school. People are out of work. Small businesses are worried about whether they can stay open. He's more worried about his own pocket. And he just needs people that are going to put America before themselves, put people before politics. So the first thing, we'll sit down and make sure members actually come to work, go to committee, we'll focus getting people back to work, back to school, back to health, back to normal. We'll make sure that America is strong. We'll make sure that we focus on America first as we go forward. Remember, we had an unemployment level that was one of the lowest you've ever found. Today we have a hard time finding people to work because government is giving you $15 an hour more per week to stay home. Who does that hurt? 
the shoulders of this man. That's where it hurts. We want to get people incentive not to work again. We want to get people incentive to invest for the future, but invest in now. It's not that. Well, we're meeting a lot of real people today who are not just numbers on a ledger or in a government Excel sheet. They've actually suffered under the policies of Phil Murphy and now under Joe Biden. Um, what is going to be your number one priority, Senator, if you make it to Washington? Yeah, I know you very well. We followed you in Trenton, but what's on your agenda? Making sure that you have the incentive for the policy over time is not going to increase spending than by the imaginary amount of Bill Murphy and this president and this Congress have done that have made the future generations less poor for the future. They have more so much more than just this year and everything we do. But my barbecue is 39 cents cheaper on the 4th of July or whatever it is. And so the focus is creating policies that grow the economy and keep the American people safe. We need to do both, and those are the things we need to do. We've got to focus on the things that the gate way. We've got to have the same thing. Definitely still. Got a lot of things we can do. Great incentive to have a very strong and robust American system. Think about what they're going to do. Gas is at the highest price it's been since the last time Joe Biden was in president. Almost every single thing costs you more from your coffee to your milk to your gas to your bananas to your fruit to your meat. That's the inflation that is going through. That's the Democrat vote that caused it. The sad part is we warned about it. When you think about the security and say, do you feel secure and safe going to a major city today? We have officers, many women who have served, who are now retiring based on the way they're treated. You can't just replace them. They defunded the police when they want to defund their building. How secure will you be? We watch crime rise every single major city to follow that word. And even outside of cities, we've had firework displays canceled in the Jersey Shore this year because of concerns yeah. over crowds. And right now, this is the issue that in my own legislative district have increased in car burglaries and in home invasions. We've got to change the policy and make sure that there's a Something you have a lot of experience in, and we're hoping to be able to fly at this cycle. You campaigned in blue states. You know what it takes to win in a blue state. New Jersey being a suburban state. The Republican Party's been on the ropes in recent years, but there seems to be some early indications that maybe the suburbs are waking up and beginning to tune into the Republican message as the Biden and Murphy agenda completely flat faces in the Garden State. Do you have any tips for Republicans running in New Jersey for what they can do to connect with voters that maybe had that I believe in science sign on their own? We're considered voting for Joe Biden last year. Maybe they did it, but are starting to have some buyer's remorse. I mean, you've got great contrast just in the policy zone from security, from economics, but it's more important who's willing to listen, who's willing to be honest with you. Who's willing to give you an answer and a solution to a problem instead of spending more time worrying about their own problem? John Cain has a long record of doing this. That's why he can bridge the gap. Who's willing to bring people together? You know, some people think that Republicans didn't do well in the last election. If you look in Congress, it's the first time since 1994 not one Republican incumbent lost. All the polls said the Democrats would win 15 seats. They got the number right, the party wrong. But what's even more important, Every Democrat who lost, lost to a Republican woman and a Republican minority. This party is expanding because this party is willing to listen to more important, we're willing to lead at the same time. And that's what we've been doing. We're putting people before politics. You may have never been a Republican in your life, and you don't need to be one. But listen to Tom King, and what you're going to find is, yeah, my house is going to be safe. My kids are going to be back in school. Government's not going to continue to shut down small businesses. Those who are elected are not going to be the elitists that are above me, but they're going to have different rules or different laws for them, but not for me. That's the fundamental difference. You feel more secure today, your gas prices are higher, the streets are less safe, the borders are out of control. And this is all based upon Democrats having a majority. Their policies are not successful. And what's sad is the Democratic Party is old as Democrats. This is a socialist dream of the party that has continued to expand, and no socialist country has ever succeeded. They have outspent. Look at Venezuela, look what's happening in Cuba. And the idea, the, the idea that somebody in another country craves freedom, 
and you hear from the White House says, no, that's just about freedom. America should stand with anyone who wants to be free. Be it Tiananmen Square, be it Hong Kong, be it Havana. Because America is more than a country, America is an idea. And that's not about party. And that's what Tom Paine represents. It's a clear contrast, and the beginnings of a new start for America may begin right here at the Bridgewater Diner and NJ7. Senator Kane, we'll see you on the trail. Leader McCarthy, hopefully we'll see you back in Jersey before it's all said and done. I'm coming back because I had the fries with cheese and gravy. Can't get those anywhere else. See, folks, New Jersey's got a lot of advantages. It's not just the beaches. We love the beaches, the fries and gravy. We'll see you soon, safe Jerseyans. Thank you. Just remember, elect the right time. We need a better Tom in Congress. That's right. You've got, you've got two Toms. That's right. The one's an improvement over the other, no doubt about it. Thank you.